Five years after Los Angeles voters approved tax increases to raise one and a half billion dollars to address the region's homelessness problem, there are more people living and dying on the streets than ever before. Many of these men and women are both frequent targets and perpetrators of violence. The mayor has partially blamed this failure on the pandemic, which slowed new housing construction and limited shelter capacity. It's true that COVID caused a surge in homelessness, but the city's plan was already failing. In 2019, homelessness spiked 13% in LA County. The centerpiece of LA's plan was to spend the $1.2 billion building 10,000 supportive housing units over a decade. Five years into the 10-year plan, just 14 projects are in service. Of the promised 10,000 supportive housing units, the city has completed fewer than 700. It would take more than 30 years to house all of the people currently homeless in LA County at that pace, according to a federal court order. As the homeless population exploded, some shelter providers implored the mayor to spend more of the money on immediate shelter, mental health services, and substance abuse treatment. But Garcetti went all in on his ambitious 10-year plan. Los Angeles's approach to the homelessness crisis is a series of colossal failures, but it could take more modest steps of helping alleviate suffering and restore peace and safety to the streets. It could also bring an end to many long-standing policies that caused these men and women to end up homeless in the first place. Los Angeles has the largest unsheltered homeless population in America, and Ground Zero is a 50-square-block district known as Skid Row, officially turned into a containment zone by the city in 1976. The problem has escalated into a full-blown humanitarian crisis. In a scathing court order issued in April, federal district judge David Carter called the city's inaction so egregious and the state so non-functional that it is strongly likely in violation of the Equal Protection Clause. A federal judge calls LA's response to the homeless crisis structural racism. Federal Judge David O. Carter, he ordered both the city and county to offer some form of shelter to the entire population of Skid Row. It's a problem that that's rooted in misguided government policies decades in the making. But Judge Carter's order places blame for the city's failure to address the immediate crisis squarely at the feet of Mayor Garcetti. The process of making good on the mayor's plan to build 10,000 units of supportive housing has been rife with cost overruns, delays, and possible corruption. Local public radio affiliate KCRW has documented instances of corruption surrounding the city's homelessness housing plan, with developers receiving taxpayer money to build homeless housing, reselling the properties to themselves for millions in profit. Carter notes that the improper relationship between City Hall and real estate developers is neither isolated nor new, and that the FBI has been investigating the possible corruption in City Hall since 2017, a probe that has led to the prosecution of real estate consultants, political fundraisers, and even most notably, former council member Jose Huizar, whose council district included Skid Row. In June 2020, Huizar was arrested by federal agents for using his position to cover up illegal activities. Federal Judge David O. Carter, he ordered both the city and county to offer some form of shelter to the entire population of Skid Row. We're hearing they're evaluating options, including an appeal. Judge Carter has ordered the city to put $1 billion in escrow so that he can monitor how that money is spent. He's also ordering the city to provide shelter for the more than 4,600 people living on the streets of Skid Row before the end of 2021. Judge Carter criticized Garcetti for failing to declare a state of emergency, which he says could have eliminated bureaucratic hurdles to building new housing. The mayor has said Carter's order will derail the city's plan. When Judge Carter issued an order in Orange County allowing city governments to clear encampments, they did so without arrests by sending social workers to offer shelter and mental health and drug and treatment services. There's a danger that law enforcement could take a more aggressive approach if the city fails to act. LA County Sheriff Alex Villanueva sent a team of deputies out to Venice Beach in mid-June without consulting the city council and vowed to start clearing encampments in the coming weeks with or without city approval. Several weeks later, the Los Angeles City Council on July 2nd approved new prohibitions on camping near shelters, parks, elementary schools, and entrances to homes and businesses. In Judge Carter's report, he also criticized Mayor Garcetti for his failure to spend a significant portion of the $1.2 billion that the city has borrowed on constructing temporary shelters, like these sprung structures, tiny houses, or even 3D printed homes. The Garcetti administration claims to have moved more than 30,000 people into permanent housing using existing housing stock, but the growth of LA's unsheltered homeless population is far outpacing new housing construction. 
California is home to some of the least affordable urban housing markets in the country, including the LA metro area, according to the U.S. Census Department's American Community Survey. A county survey found that 60% of newly homeless people cite economic hardship as the leading factor in their lack of housing, and that two-thirds became homeless while living in LA County. The approach of local and state officials has largely been to promote measures like rent control and mandating low-cost housing in new construction. But market urbanists have long said that housing is simply too expensive to build because of zoning, permitting, and onerous overregulation. Several studies have demonstrated that increasing the housing supply would bring down the price of housing for the poor. A Journal of Urban Economics study of the Bay Area found local land use regulations are closely linked to the value of houses sold. A Brookings Institution study of California found cities with less restrictive zoning and large populations issued more multifamily permits. And a Federal Reserve study found that in metros where demand for housing is high, more regulations correlated to almost double the increase in housing prices. Even regulation meant to directly address the problem by mandating affordable housing caused prices to rise 2-3% to faster according to a 2009 HUD study. Since the housing market's structural problems won't be fixed anytime soon, the homeless population is likely to keep growing. And Mayor Garcetti may be be headed out the door after reportedly being offered an ambassadorship to India from the Biden administration. But his successor will have to decide whether to continue on the course he set by fighting a legal battle while spending taxpayer money on six-figure permanent housing units or to shift course in favor of cheaper, faster emergency shelter to more immediately address the deteriorating conditions in the city's public spaces. Los Angeles appears to be incapable of delivering adequate housing on its current path, which is why Judge Carter ordered the city to offer some form of shelter for everyone on Skid Row by October. The Ninth Circuit overrode that order on June 10th, pending an appeal to be heard on July 7th. Judge Carter sees the current situation as not only a failure of current city leadership, but a result of decades of government neglect and abuse. Starting with the city creating and sustaining the squalor of Skid Row by making it a containment zone in 1976, condemning and demolishing thousands of inexpensive single-room occupancy hotels, using eminent domain to seize homes in poor communities for highway construction, and driving up housing prices through exclusionary zoning and excessive permitting, all policies that he says were designed to segregate and disenfranchise.